Right, so I haven't had any preparation for this, but we're doing it, and it's going to be awesome. So uh, I'm going to be talking about behavior-driven development and the approach that we took on incorporating that with Ember. Um, so my name is Michael, and I'm an Ember addict, so I thought that it would be nice if we could all launch EA, Ember Anonymous. <laughs> no? No. Okay. So <laughs> um, jokes aside, my name is Michael Shinnis. I work for a company called Truva. And we're essentially an e-commerce platform, and we get re independent retailers to sell their products online because we know that they can bring like really quality products and sell them offline, but they're really bad at it doing it online. Um, we've got f around five. Is it five? Yes, five. Five Ember apps, uh, not three hundred and fifty, <laughs> and um, yeah. So you can imagine like the complexity behind upgrading everything to Ember 2.1 and um, a lot of stuff. So I'm very excited to be talking here today. So a little bit about BDD. So it started in 2009 by Dan North. And it was initially planned to be an extension of TDD, but it grew much more than that. So we've got now um, specific keywords that you can use and a specific structure. And it allows you to build much better and stronger code and much faster. So I've put, a, I've put up some key um, reasons why, we, why you would want to use BDD. But really, the main reason that you would want to use BDD is because it's simple. And anyone can write or read tests. That's a really big point, because everyone in the team, even if they're, a no, even if they're a tech or non-tech, they can write tests for you. And we can essentially take those, take those te tests. And each step of that test is one key interaction for on the interface. So and when I say simple, I mean seriously, seriously simple. And I bet that if I show you now the Gherkin syntax, which is this, everyone will understand it. So this is a scenario. So a scenario is essentially one, one test. And if I, if I want to add something to my basket, I have four different steps that I go to. First is that I'm on a product page. I have, say I have one item on my basket, and I, add the, I click the Add to Cart button, then I should have two items in my basket. So that's a really simple like, uh, way that the actual user would behave. So hence the behavior-driven development. Um, the past few years have been really exciting for the BDD, um, for the BDD world. And there have been many, many frameworks throughout, the, uh, throughout many languages. And being a JavaScript developer, I naturally just boiled down to the last two. So I either wanted to use um, CucumberJS or Yada. Um, and it eventually boiled down to having an add-on for that. So we eventually boiled down to Ember CLI Yada. So Ember CLI Yara was uh, created by Albert Yan. He said he was going to be here. Not, not today. OK, so um, he was created by Albert Yan. He's an awesome guy. He does some really nice, pro some really nice uh, projects. So have a look at his GitHub. Right, so we'll go through like a really simple um, test that we would write, um, for example, on our website. Um, so we're going to go through a table pagination. And say we've got like a table that displays like colors, and uh, we have a limit of ten on each on each page. Um, I'm, the only thing that I'm going to assume is that you have Ember CLI Mirage setup, because we always use it, and it's really handy for running your tests much faster on um, um, on your testing environment. So, the setup. OK. So the setup is really easy. You, you only need to do ember install ember CLI yada. And that downloads the package for you. I swear that's not going to take ages. And then it's going to eventually come to a point where it's going to run the generator. And it's going to install one file. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let me pause this. OK, so the installation is finished. And then it generates this file for you. 
So the steps is where you actually type in the logic for your tests. So each, each line of the Gherkin syntax that I showed earlier is essentially one step. And I'll go, th I'll go into that in just a moment. So I want to write my test. First, I need to generate my feature. I use the Ember CLI um, add-on, and I use the Ember G feature color pagination. And that generates me, ah. OK. So that generates me two files. It generates the color pagination.feature, which, which is where our Gherkin syntax will go, which is the one that I've shown earlier. And it also generates the color pagination steps. And this is where we write some of our <coughs> steps. I'll go into that in just a moment. So the file structure now looks like this. So, OK. So this is our steps, which is the global steps, which I will explain in just a moment. That's our color pagination steps, which again I will explain in just a moment. And let's dive right into this, which is where we will write our Gherkin syntax. So we named our test color pagination.feature. And dot feature is essentially the extension that we use for the Gherkin files. So I want to test like if I have three colors and I'm, on the pro and I'm on the colors page, then I should only see three rows. So I want to I do an acceptance test just for that. And just for a sanity check, I'm going to check that I'm on the correct page as well. Now, remember that we added like t a limit of 10 on each, page, on each page of the pagination. If I have 15 colors, then the second page should only have five. So my second test would be, given there are 15 colors, and I'm on the page 2, so that's a query param, then there should be five rows. And that should be, again, on the same page. Now, you see a lot of duplication on this, mainly because you have the same, the same structure there, but you have different variables, which is the number and the page. Um, we can avoid the duplication <coughs> horror, essentially, by, by using the tables, which is really handy. So when we were writing the test of Truva, we, we came up with a huge, huge file of right, essentially having the same test, but over and over again. And then diving right into it, we essentially found out that we could do it much easier with the table, but yeah. OK, so the way it works is you write your scenario as you did before, but essentially anywhere that you want a variable, you would, you would put that within um, square brackets. So the, so the name number there would be essentially re, uh, replaced by the number on the table. And the same applies for the page, the display rows, and again the page. So essentially each row on the table is one test. So you can have, you can, you can essentially like get a dump of an, of an XLS file. You can put it in your table. And you can essentially create one, one step, sorry, one test, but it will run 100 times for all your data. So that's really, really handy. So I promised that I was going to talk about the steps. And here they are. So you see, first of all, this Yada localization English library. That is really powerful because it allows us to create, um, it allows us to create the steps for the Gherkin syntax, this thing, in any language that we want. So we can essentially take any, any Gherkin syntax. We can translate it from anywhere, from any p people like working abroad you know, in the same company or anything. And we can apply the same steps that we had earlier. So all of this Gherkin syntax, each line is one step. So given there are a number of colors, <coughs> and when I am on page, page, all that, is, all that is one step. So let's take the when I am on page, page. If we write this, this will essentially run as a regex. So when I am on page, and then that's a variable, page, then the value of this variable will be passed to the function. And we can do any assertions just as we did earlier, um, like before in your uh, acceptance tests. So you have access just as you did before to assert and uh, server if you have if you have um, 
and BCLI Mirage running. So in the case of this one, I, there's really no, no assertion that we can run. So we just pass OK true, just so that that step can pass. And then this next function is passed down by the Ember CLI Yara. And we can use that to essentially say, OK, this step has finished. So move on to the next step. And the, then I should be on page that within quotes, the variable, is essentially um, a, a step where we test something. So I want to make sure that I'm on that, I'm on that specific page. So I use the current URL that's provided by Ember. And I use the assert.equal that's provided by QUnit. <coughs> and I can compare the two and make sure that, yes, I'm on the correct page. So all these, are, all these steps are global. So I put everything in the steps of JS. So if I create multiple, um, if I create like 100 different feature files, all of the feature files can inherit from the same steps.js. So you have access to everything from this specific file. The color pagination steps is where we put our steps that are highly dependent on the specific feature. So if we're using the, the if we're generating Mirage data um, that, that will only be generated on this specific test, the color pagination test, um, we can put everything here inside just to, clip our, just to keep our steps of JS uh, short, nice, and smooth. Smooth. That was weird. OK. So we use the Ember CLI Mirage server.create list. We pass, down the, uh, we pass down the factory. That's a wrong factory. And we say the amount of uh, factories that we want to create. And that generates basically a list of, uh, list of data in Ember CLI Mirage. And then we can check that that number is correct by using the assert.equal again, just as we did earlier in QUnit. And again, we have access to the same parameters, the same objects that we had earlier in our acceptance test. And we can check that that amount is correct. And again, we have the same access to the helpers. So we can use the find to count the number of rows. Um, that was meant to be like a really short introduction to BDD. I'm not sure how much more time we have left. So, OK, because that was my end. So um, I'm creating an update that's coming out soon, not now soon, as the, um, as the bubble guy announced last time. <laughs> but it I promise it is coming by the end of next week, um, which will allow you to create uh, feature files and run your tests. Uh, like proper unit tests on your models, on your components, anything that you want. So you can essentially just like run tests on specific components using the Gherkin syntax, which wasn't available before. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Any questions? Yes. So um, earlier you showed a bit of code of the steps.js file. Yes. Do I have to write these steps? Um, there's no really default. You, you type them in once. So if you're like reusing the same steps in your different files, this steps.js is you, you essentially inherit from here. You'll see that we import the steps from the, from the steps.js file, and we inherit from that. So we keep the same steps. So we, so we can reuse steps over and over again throughout all our feature files. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, he did really. Why, why the name? Yeah, why the name? Good question. I don't know the answer to that, but I did read a blog uh, yesterday as I was doing the slides um, that he wasn't too happy with Cucumber.js because the structure of Cucumber.js is very strict. So he created on, he went on to create Yara, which essentially like is more flexible with, uh, with the Gherkin syntax. And it allows you to like, use this specific library to do more stuff. So you can use that for deployment stuff. So you can create like, your feature file, and that will be your deployment. And then you can do like, another feature file will be another deployment or whatever. So it, 
essentially like gives you more stuff to do. Yes. Quick question about this slide. Right? Yeah. Um, Which? Yeah, so the first dollar thing will be the first parameter that will be passed down. Now, the, use why n the reason why we use int is because whatever will be passed in, it won't be a string, so it will be converted to an integer. So we know that amount will be an integer. Yeah. Yes? So if you were to use one of Ender's asynchronous test helpers, like yep. or fill in, yep. or wait, um, would it be the case that you would do and then next? Is that how it works? Great question. So you have access to the and then for the acceptance tests, and you also have access to the wait for the unit tests that's coming in the next update. Okay, great. Yes? Yeah, it's literally written down like this. So you write your test, you, you say where, and that knows like wherever it finds anything within uh, square brackets, it will replace anything on the table with that value. Okay, let's hear it. 